Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, lesson regarding inertial and non-inertial frame of references. First I will be explaining to you what a frame of reference actually is. Suppose let us consider a collection of objects like cars, buildings, people attached to the earth and they are at rest relative to each other. I mean, for example, the building is at rest relative to the, co uh, to the coffee shop beside it. And in this situation, we define the surrounding. By surrounding, I mean the objects as a whole as a frame of reference with respect to which changes in position and motion of other objects can be measured. For example, uh, if I say a car is moving, we, by that statement we mean that the car is moving with relative to the earth's surface. But uh, for a person who is sitting inside the car, the car is at rest because the person and the car both are moving together. So you see it depends upon the point of view, the ob observer. The motion is described from the point of view of the observer. The technical definition of a frame of reference is, it consists of a set of physical reference points that uniquely locate and orient the coordinate system and standardized measurements of objects to be observed. We use the Cartesian coordinate system, the polar coordinate system to define a frame of reference. It is basically from the, FIFO, from the uh, point of view of the observer. We have to remember a few things. Every motion is associated with a frame of reference. Whether it is at rest, whether it is at uniform motion, or whether it is accelerating. The preferable frame of reference is an observer and the observer's state of motion. Generally, we consider the observer to be the frame of reference with respect to which a motion is described. The validity of Newton's three laws depends on the frame of reference from which the state of rest, uniform motion and acceleration is measured. You will see that there are certain frames of reference where the validity holds true and there are certain frames of reference where the validity uh, uh, does not hold true. Now there are two types of observational frames of reference I mean by which I mean that frames of reference related to an observer. The first one is the inertial frame of reference. In this frame of reference, uh, Newton's first law holds true. Any other frame of reference moving at a constant velocity at or at rest with respect to an inertial frame of reference is also inertial. We have to know that the first feature of an inertial frame of reference is uh, that the Newton's first law holds true. Now any other frame of reference which moves at rest or at uniform velocity by which I mean the Newton's first law is held true with respect to an inertial frame of reference is also inertial. For most terrestrial phenomena by which I mean phenomena related to the surface, the earth is generally an inertial frame of reference. So an observer moving with constant velocity on earth is also an inertial frame of reference. Logical form of this previous statement. Now one more important th fact that we have to remember is there is nothing absolute about a frame of reference. All fr frames are at motion relative to each other. By motion I mean it can be at rest, it can be at uniform motion uh, or uniform velocity. There is nothing called an absolute frame of reference. You can't specify that this frame, this particular frame of reference is absolute with respect to which we can, me we can measure any motion. Any frame of reference can act as an absolute frame of reference so all frames of reference are relative to each other we have to remember this fact now let us come to the non-inertial frame of reference as you see the difference is Newton's first law is not valid here because acceleration occurs here in Newton's if the Newton's first law would be valid there would not have been any acceleration and the state would would have been, and the property of inertia would have held true a frame undergoing acceleration with respect to an inertial frame of reference is a non-inertial frame of reference. In the previous frame of reference, we had a frame of reference undergoing at undergoing in the motion of state of rest or the state of uniform velocity. That would have been an inertial frame of reference, but a frame undergoing acceleration, that is velocity changing with time, that would with respect to an inertial frame, that would be a non-inertial frame. So because of this statement, the second law does not hold true because you see uh, this acceleration 
changes the state of inertia so the newton's second law that is force equals to mass and a product of mass and acceleration does not hold true to make it hold true we have to introduce a concept of another imaginary force we will study that soon so if we consider the statement if a non inertial frame of reference is moving with an acceleration a not or a zero relative to the inertial frame the second law of motion is modified to f minus m a not equals to m a f f the net force is f minus m a not and m a is the uh, acceleration of the frame uh, that we observe okay from another inertial frame of reference a not is the acceleration of the frame with respect to the non inertial frame with respect to an inertial frame of reference so we can rewrite the statement as f plus fp equals to ma where fp equals to minus ma naught which is this called the pseudo force pseudo basically means false or imaginary or fictitious so this force is fictitious in nature now one more important characteristic of this statement is uh, that the pseudo force is always uh, opposite the acceleration uh, the motion uh, which the frame of reference undergoes so if ma is in a particular direction then the fictitious force or the pseudo force is in the opposite direction okay now let us talk a bit more about the concept of pseudo force if we have to consider a non inertial frame of reference moving with an acceleration relative to an inertial frame and want to apply newton's second law on a particle of mass m because we know that the second law does, is not valid here so to make it valid for a frame moving with an acceleration with respect to an inertial frame we must include in our equation of motion a fictitious force which is the pseudo force this pseudo force is fp equals to minus ma so for this let us consider an example a uh, sphere for example a pendulum is in a car the car is moving towards the right with an acceleration a now there are two observers here one is an inertial observer in an inertial frame of reference that is observer one here and there is another uh, observer two which is in a non inertial frame of reference because the observer is inside the car observing the pendulum and the car is moving right with an acceleration a so you see um, the because the car is moving with an acceleration uh, the property of inertia changes and the pendulum deflects towards the right and left to undergo a motion like a simple harmonic motion the theta is the angle between the deflected uh, path and the original path of the uh, string with which the pendulum is attached or the sphere is attached now if you know about free body diagram it gives us the overview overall picture of the forces acting on a particle so there are um, two observers here one is observer one let us consider it the observer a now observer a sees that the uh, pendulum is moving is in a frame that is moving with an acceleration a right so if this is the mass and the uh, and it uh, the motion of this pendulum occurs due to the tension inside the string now this tension is is actually force this as a type of force this tension is given by t here now if we uh, uh, if we break this uh, if we if we if we break this force into two components that is the horizontal component t sin theta and the vertical component t cos theta which you will learn in vector analysis uh, since the body since the pendulum as a whole is moving with an acceleration ma uh, with an acceleration a towards the right and there is a downward acceleration of the gravity because because of gravity we can consider the two following equations of motion that is the horizontal component t sin theta is balanced by the horizontal acceleration of the whole body it is ma and the vertical component is balanced by the acceleration due to gravity so if we divide these two equations we get t sin theta t cos theta or t tan theta or tan theta itself equals to the ratio of acceleration of the body with the acceleration due to gravity similarly <coughs> according to b b is the observer inside the non inertial frame of reference he sees that there is no net force acting on the pendulum the pendulum deflects because 
of the following forces similarly as the previous diagram the uh, pendulum as a whole seems to be at rest but the but there is a deflection towards the left on the opposite side okay um, of, of an acceleration a now this is actually the pseudo force so similarly the horizontal component of the tension balances the deflection to, towards the left that is ma and the vertical component is balanced by the weight of the body that is mg so similarly we also get the same equation tan theta equals to a by g now this suggests that uh, there is actually no net force acting on the pendulum this ma that we are considering here in the opposite direction that is in the left direction contrary to the previous example is actually the fictitious or the pseudo force here so students i hope you understood a little bit more in the next lesson we will cover cover about two important consequences about uh, related to pseudo force one is the concept of centrifugal force and another is the concept of apparent change in the weight uh, measured during the motion of a lift and that concept will be very important during sums which you will be solving because you are a medical expert so thank you um, see you next time